Hi, I'm Daniel Andrews, owner and creator of andrewsfootball.com. Now, this video is my Black Monday special. I'm going to break down all the head coaches that, that were fired, and I'm going to break down all the positions that are available. It's going to be a quick video because this is New Year's. I got a great New Year's plan. I hope you got a great New Year's plan. I'm just going to go down all the positions real fast. Uh, first off, um, Green Bay. I actually, before I touch into that, just note, I'm going to break down every single wild card game. I have all four of those games broken down to you this week. I'm very busy this week. I'm going to have lots of videos, but I'm going to jump into this part of it here. Uh, Green Bay, uh, this to me is the number one position. If, if I had to choose as a head coach which position I would want, I want Green Bay. You have Aaron Rodgers. You have the best fan base. Uh, you, you, you got the best, when I say best fan base, I'm not talking most passionate fans. You, you lose a game, you go into Walmart, you run to the Packers fans, they're going to congratulate you. you. You do this in Philly or New York, they're going to throw stuff at you. I mean, so you got the best fan base. Uh, you really have the most stability. Uh, it's a great organization. So if, if I'm the Packers, you know, I, I think that they're going to go after a defensive-minded guy. And then they should find somebody who can deal with Aaron Rodgers. Tell Aaron Rodgers, hey, you can take Saturdays off. I'm going to wash your car. I'll give you a pedicure. I'll do whatever. Make Aaron Rodgers the offensive coordinator. It doesn't matter. I, if I'm the Green Bay Packers, I'm bringing in the defense of mine. I'm just focusing on the defense. I'll let Aaron Rodgers do whatever he wants. Uh, one thing I will say it was extremely interesting to me. They brought in Pat Fitzgerald uh, for an interview. He's the head coach for the University of Northwestern. For those of you that aren't big into college football, I'm not either, but Pat Fitzgerald's story, he was a walk-on, became a two-time All-American at uh, Northwestern as a linebacker. Really, really good player, but realized he didn't have the athletic ability uh, to play in the NFL. Very smart, side to get into coaching. Rised through the ranks um, really fast, became the head coach at Northwestern, and it's done a fantastic job. I think he's actually one of the top ten. If I was to break him down, because winning at Northwestern is, is a lot more difficult than winning at somewhere like Michigan where you have the resources and um, all the money available, you, you know, you're not recruiting five-star players at Northwestern. You are at Michigan, Ohio State, and all those other guys at Northwestern's competing against. Um, he has no head coaching experience, but this, what this shows me is Packers are looking at a wide spectrum of places. It'll be very interesting to see who they bring on. I, if I'm Green Bay, I would strongly suggest to find somebody to just worry about the defensive side of the ball and get an offensive coordinator that Rodgers can work with. That would be my suggestion. Uh, this, to me, is the number one position available. Out of all the positions that are open, this is the best one. Uh, the second one is Cleveland. A lot of people think that this is the best position. I, I think that once he was let go and Greg Williams, who deserved uh, a head coaching chance before this, uh, keep in mind he was part of that whole Bounty Gate thing. Uh, so so uh, he was kind of, there was like a black ball on him for a long time. Uh, since he got this, this opportunity, he's done a fantastic A-plus job. I, I think if you keep uh, Greg Williams and Freddie Kitchens in their positions and you allow this team to grow, I think you're looking at playoff berth. Uh, if you bring somebody else in, uh, Mike McCarthy, for example, is a name I've been uh, hearing about, Bruce Aarons, another name I heard about, I think you actually take a step back because you show them that, hey, you have some success, you win, you still get fired. I think it's a bad look. And now maybe better long term. But I think in the short term, you actually send them back. Here's, here's a team that went, uh, won, what, what were they, seven, eight, and one? So I think they actually may go backwards. They may go like to five, ten, uh, five or six wins, but maybe they're better going forward. Uh, so you bring in a new coach. I think Browns fans are really expecting to go to playoffs, but you got a new system, a new scheme. Uh, if you keep them going, I think you got a playoff berth. I think if you start from scratch again, I think you really stunt this team's development. So uh, that's something that's going to be very interesting. So my note to the Cleveland Browns, keep what you got as is. Use those draft picks. Build up your team. You have a really good thing going right now. My suggestion is don't ruin it. But, you know, it's Cleveland. This is going to be a very interesting story. Um, I, I – uh, uh, you know, you also have uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Marvin Lewis was there for 17 years, didn't win a single playoff game. So that that really, to me, um, is, is a is a 
uh, as, as kind of kind of a positive is because you have a lot of stability in Cincinnati, which which you don't think of. But uh, Cincinnati is, is very interesting because the owner is also the GM, a very similar structure to the Dallas Cowboys, even though you don't really associate the two teams with each other. It's a very similar structure, power, power structure wise. Um, Martin Lewis is there for 17 years, didn't win a single playoff game. So to me, that says that, hey, you'll be given some time to rebuild this team. Uh, there's also a lot of talent on this team. Uh, there's also been talks that Hugh Jackson, who Marvin Lewis uh, endorsed, it, it could be the next head coach. Uh, there's also been talk about Vance Joseph being interviewed for either the defensive coordinator or as the head coach. Uh, I hate to say this, but it's, it's going to happen. Eric Bieniemy, the Chiefs offensive coordinator. Now, keep in mind, the two former Chiefs offensive coordinators, both of them playing in the playoffs. Both of them are going to play against each other on Sunday. Uh, so uh, it, it, the Andy Reid coaching tree is, is something that people are picking from. Eric Bieniemy is going to be an NFL head coach next year, unless some college position, you know, wants to pay him buku bucks and he wants to go to college. That's a possibility also. Uh, but if I'm Eric Bieniemy, to me, this is gold going to Cincinnati. This is the team that he was drafted by when he was a player. Uh, this, to me, you could have Hugh Jackson as your offensive coordinator, Vance Joseph as your defensive coordinator. If this works out, you have some head coaching experience uh, surrounding you. Both these guys are trying to become head coaches again, in my opinion, but they also failed as head coaches. They could be able to help you out. Uh, Vance Joseph and Eric Bieniemy were college uh, teammates at Colorado. They won national championship together. So that's kind of a tie-in also. Uh, I think that this coaching structure, Eric Bieniemy, huge, huge Jackson. Jackson and and um, oh man, I, I just said his name. I just forgot. Oh wow, uh, I'm all excited about New Year's here, folks. Uh, Vance Joseph, I think that's brilliant. If, if I'm Cincinnati Bengals, this to me is the grand slam right here. Uh, but it'll be very interesting because I think I think the Bengals job is actually one that I'm really interested in because you have a young, talented defense and you have some really good players on offense. Uh, so to me. Bengals is a really good position. If I'm Eric Bieniemy, I'm strongly taking this one into consideration. Uh, next team I'm going to talk about is, uh, I already mentioned, mentioned Vance Joseph, so I might as well segue in, into Denver uh, after back-to-back -back losing seasons. Uh, Vance Joseph, by the way, is an excellent defensive mind, excellent defensive coordinator, but I, I think that this is really a bad spot for him. This is a team that really needed some help on the offensive side of the ball. Um, there was a lot of talent on defense, but Denver's going to go to an offensive mind, a veteran offensive mind. Uh, Case Keenum's only around. Uh, he's only signed till next year, and they gave him a lot of money. So I think that what they're going to do is the same thing Kansas City did during the draft. The quarterback, either at ninth or 10th, they're going to have to coin flip with Buffalo, uh, probably have to trade up to get their guy, and then they're going to try to sit him for a year. The negative about the Denver job is you've got to nail this draft pick, and, and really – Nailing a quarterback, you know, 20, 21 years old and saying, hey, you're the face of our franchise. You're, you're expected to win. It's a lot of pressure. It, it's a crapshoot. But uh, here's the thing, though. Kansas City Chiefs found the homes at pick number 10, Denver. So I'm just saying. Uh, and now a team that did nail the quarterback in the draft and at pick number 10 last year was the Arizona Cardinals. They're letting go of Steve Wilt. So, uh, this is probably a mistake. Uh, you could have let go of the GM because they didn't really put the – uh, pieces behind him that he really needed. Here's here's a guy who's a rookie head coach who's got to develop a rookie quarterback, and he's the defensive guy. He's switching defensive schemes. He's switching offensive schemes. They fired their offensive coordinator midseason. Um, you, you know, I, uh, I, I actually think that you probably could have given this guy another chance, but when you get the first overall pick, it makes sense. Uh, there's a lot of talent in this team, but I really thought that this team would struggle. The only way I could see this team – really being successful is they had some sort of an Atlanta Falcons breakout or the offense just is clicking on all cylinders. But that's only if Sam Bradford uh, lived up to all this potential and hype. He didn't. I don't know the whole story behind that. But if you're going with a rookie quarterback and you're a rookie head coach who's not um, an offensive coach, there, there's really a lot of um, – problems here uh this this has some really good spots you have the quarterback you have some talent on defense you have some really good pieces in play on offense uh you know me i i you know just the nostalgia type i'd like to see bruce aaron's uh return to arizona i think he'd be a great fit i'd like to see that however i got a weird feeling he's going somewhere else i i, I think he's uh, actually going to tampa bay but that's um uh, I'll, I'll talk about that here in just a second but um uh this to me is a good spot but um 
you, you got you only got certain pieces in play. You got the quarterback. You got Patrick Peterson. Hopefully, Larry Fitzgerald comes back. Uh, you have David Johnson, Christian Kirk, but you need a lot of help. So uh, this is kind of a rebuilding project. I think that what they're going to do is go on the offensive side of the ball, try to find somebody to help develop Rosen. Uh, like I said, now I'm going to jump into Tampa Bay. They went ahead and let go of Dirk Cutter. This is this was a. Um, I think Dirk Cutter is is a phenomenal coach. Now those of you who don't remember the whole story. Lovey Smith drafted Jameis Winston, brought in Dirk Cutter as the offensive coordinator. Went from two to six wins. Dirk Cutter was going to leave, get a head coaching job. So they decided to fire Lovey Smith, promote Dirk Cutter. They went from six wins, I think it was the nine wins. They they were right on the threshold of a wild card berth. Everything looked really really bright. Then and the team got worse. Uh, I think they went from nine to six wins, and then they come back going from six wins to five wins this year. Uh, so you obviously had to let him go. The negative is, or the positive, depending on how you want to look at it, is that this team is linked to Jameis Winston. They already announced that he's going to be their starting quarterback next year. So you have to build a team around Winston. Bruce Arians just went public saying that he would love to be able to work with Jameis Winston. Uh, I think it's David Litch or Drew Litch. I'm, I'm drawing a blank off the top of my head. Uh, he's the general manager for Tampa Bay. He worked with Bruce Arians. Uh, both of them really like Winston. I think that's a match made in heaven. Now, uh, one thing I will say uh, about Dirk Cutter, uh, and he actually got Andy Reid his first coaching job, and I already said Eric Bieniemy is going to leave. I could see Dirk Cutter coming to Kansas City for a year or two, being the offensive coordinator, getting back into coaching. Uh, he's been a head coach both college and a pro, so there's a good chance that uh, he may go back to college. Um, another team that also nailed the quarterback in the draft was the New York Jets. Now, to me, um, this is not uh, that appealing of a team to go to, even though you have the superstar quarterback. I love Darnold. I think he's got all the talent in the world. I think he also needs to sit for a year. I mean, in a perfect world, Sam Darnold's coming back to USC for his senior year. No, he's coming back and he's his second year as a starter for New York Jets. He has some talent on defense. I mean, you got Len Leonard, uh, Leonard Williams, Jamal Adams. These guys are superstars. In the making, both these guys are Pro Bowl studs. Both these guys have Hall of Fame type potential. They're building some great things on that defense. On offense, you have all sorts of problems. Plus, you need to develop Darnold. So I, I think that the rumor is that they really want to get an offensive guy. Um, if I'm the Jets, I'm almost thinking work on the defense and then get a really solid offensive coordinator. Tell Darnold, hey, you're not throwing more than 40 passes a game. We don't know. We don't care. We're not going to give you a lot of responsibility. Try to grow him slow while you build up that defense. Uh, you can do just the opposite. You, you could get a strong offensive mind, a, a veteran head coach um, who can build Darnold up because he's the future of your team. But like I said, he's a guy who should be starting a senior year at USC, not as second season with the New York Jets, but that, that I'll get off my soapbox there. Uh, he's got all the talent in the world, but he's got nothing to build around. So uh, uh, it, it's not really a good situation. And um, and I'm going from a, from a bad situation in the Jets, so I think a worse one in Miami. Because this, to me, of all the coaching buyers here, I'm going to take a drink before this one here. I'm sorry this video is getting a little long here, but... Um, I was really surprised by this one. Yeah, I know they lost their last three games. They had a chance to get into the playoffs, but they're 7-9. and nine. Uh, You lost your quarterback... I think what he missed, like four to six weeks in Tanny Hill. You linked your quarterback to your head coach. Your head coach stuck up for your quarterback, stuck behind the guy, and then you go ahead and get rid of him. Here's the deal. You lost Landry Jones, your best offensive player. You lost Ndamukong Sue, your best defensive player. They say you have your quarterback and, and head coach are linked together. So if you get rid of your head coach, now you got to get rid of your quarterback. You already told the you already told the new coach, hey, seven and nine's not good enough. So now you don't have a quarterback. You have holes on offense. You have holes on defense. So what do you do? You hit the self-destruct button. That's what you're doing in Miami. But you already said seven and nine's not good enough. So to me, they made a mistake. They should have went ahead and gave – and gave Adam Gase one more year. Whoever takes over Miami, this is a complete building project. I mean, you're in really bad shape. Buffalo's building something good. The Jets, I think, are in a better situation to build their team than you are because you need a quarterback, you need help on offense, you need help on defense. And whoever you bring in, you already told them seven and nine isn't good enough. So I think Miami Dolphins really made a big mistake. It's going to be very interesting to see who they find and what the quarterback situation is going to be going forward. Um, and, and also, it, it's um, now I want to be very clear, when head coaches get fired, it's a, it's a bad situation, but it's not a bad situation for the head coaches. 
All right, all these guys are multimillionaires. All these guys are going to TD positions, coordinator positions. All these guys got their finances set. It's all the coordinators. It's all the assistant coaches that have to take their kids out of school that don't have those millions of dollars. That's really difficult for us. You know, if you're looking at coordinators, you know, for example, the Atlanta Falcons this is the last team I'm going to talk about. They lost their offensive, defensive, and special teams coordinator. Uh, the head coach, he runs that Seattle 4 3 scheme. He's going to take over the defensive coordinator. I'm following following Atlanta very closely because I think that if you get some really good coordinators in place for the Atlanta Falcons, to me, this is a dark horse to, to uh, go back to the Super Bowl to write talent because there's a lot of talent that was injured in this team. You have Matt Ryan. You still have Julio Jones. Uh, you know, Calvin Ridley's your third receiver. He's a number one on some teams. Um, a lot of things I really like about the Atlanta Falcons. So, uh, now, listen, folks, I'm sorry for this video getting long-winded. I wanted to break things down for you. I want you all to have a wonderful New Year's. If you're one of the subscribers to Andrews Football, you know you're one of the greatest people on planet Earth. But if you're not, there's this button right there. Let's see the button. Bam! Hit that button. Become one of the greatest people on planet Earth. Happy New Year, everyone!